Hey everybody, it's me, WWG, and today on Comic Corner, we're going to continue on with our Secret Wars 2 series, and uh, continue from number 2 on to number 3 here. The number 3 in a 9 issue limited series, Secret Wars 2, and it's been great, so let's dive right on in, shall we? Let's not uh, miss any time. The Beyonder conquers the world. Oh no. Check your windows, folks. Lock them doors. Alright, there we go. Check out those issues, back issues. Pick them up. So here we go, we're good. Oh, we'll bring it over just a bit here. Just a bit over. Beyond time, space, and the myriad dimensions lies another universe to which our own is but a droplet of water to the ocean. The one who is all in that other universe has learned of our universe and has come here to walk among us, that the might that he might come to understand the essence of humanity. The fragile earth trembles beneath his feet, dreading his godlike omnipotence. Stanley presents Secret Wars 2. This world is mine. This morning, the one from beyond decided to assume human form and stick to it. And except for a few brief retreats into his energy form, he has. It's been a long day, full of many, many puzzling, intriguing, and intense new experiences. And now he is weary. Another new experience. Hey buddy, this is a no parking zone here. What are you, deaf? Get up! Move along, mister! Ugh. Why do so many first encounters with others begin with an intense experience? What? Boy, you must really had yourself a wild night. Time to go home, fella. Where do you live? I am alive, right here now. That does it. Let's see some ID. ID? ID, a driver's license or something. Where are you from, mister? I am from beyond. That better be the name of a town. Where is it? I cannot explain. However, I can show you. Go ahead! And then I'll put you back there. I shall open a portal to my realm. Holy... There's a hole in the air with just emptiness inside. That is because I am here, and I am the one who is all from that realm. I need a drink, maybe three, and then I have to get off this shift. Uncertain of the significance of encounter, the one from beyond wanders off. And at the next corner... Hey, handsome, how about a date? Are you addressing me? No, I'm just standing here holding up the wall. Come on, Ace. Do you want to go out? I desire to understand. Oh, you must be a foreigner or something. Well, look, sugar, I'm a public servant, okay? One of New York's finest. And who are you? I am <sighs> from beyond. Oopsie, cover your mouth when you yawn. You look tired. Why don't you rent a room over at the Columbus Hotel and get yourself a good night's sleep? And I'll tuck you in, okay? Yes. Good. But first, let's see some cash, honey. Uh-oh. I understand cash. Cash stands for gold. I learned this earlier. Here. That was last issue. What? Who are you trying to fool, man? You can't be real. Nobody can make gold bricks out of thin air. But... You just stay away from me, Jack. I don't know what your game is, but it's weird, and I don't like it. But you are no longer holding up the wall. Yeah, so you do it, turkey. Oh, bad hammer used.
All right. I shall. It's holding up the wall. Oh! Oh, man! He's fading out like he was just a fragment of my imagination. But, but those supports, that gold brick. Chulo, help! It's Chulo. And at the Columbus Hotel. I am weary. I desire to remedy this. Keep your shirt on. I'll be with you in a minute. Now what's on your mind? Another human instructed me to come here, rent a room, and get a good night's sleep. Yeah, okay, I'll give you our best room. You could pay me even in the morning. Because you look so trustworthy. Not to mention Rick. Judging from those snazzy threads, I'll just sneak in later and take his whole wad. Serves him right if he's just stupid enough to stay in a flea bag like this. <laughs> Here's your key. Remember, the house ain't responsible for personal belongings. The room's that way up the stairs. His name's Mr. Peters. Oh, oh. Uh, oh. Gotta do the maze. Gotta do the maze, guys. Who's going up to his hotel room to sleep? Find your way to the Newton's treasure chest. Newton fig cookies. Get yours today. Preferably at the dollar store for a buck and a quarter. But I'm always in there looking for a buck and a quarter quarter staff. Never find one, though. Alright, let's hear the start. We're a pirate. Arr. Alright. Oh, shit, this is long. Alright, through the Fig Newton tree, down the ladder, up through the trees. Oh, there's an opening there. Oh, oh, watch out for the cockatoo. Through, through the opening in the boat raft thingy, sail Fig Newton's boat. So we're up, down into the the pole of it down through around the fig newton down into the, the water now around here into the train down through through the opening through the train oh oh okay it's finish 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 where's the finish okay so we got to go we got to go up and around here up through this opening here up through the fig newton tricky around the fence boom around Fig. Oh, watch out for that gator. Is that the way we go? Yeah, that's the way we go. Shit. Up here. Up around here. Up through this opening here. Around. Around the Fig Newton. Watch out for that snake. Bites hard. So we go in through the tree here. There's an opening. Opening around here. Opening through the tree. Down. To the base. Past the, the ugly looking thing here. Uh, up and around through the balloon. It looks like an apple. Out through the opening. And boom! Shoo, you found it! Apple Newton's Fruit Chewy Cookies! And Fig Newton's Fruit Chewy Cookies. Cookies. Get it, guys. Uh, get on. All right. The one from beyond hurries toward the promise of a remedy for the ever-growing heaviness of his eyelids and sl sluggishness of his limbs. He notes an odd marking on the small piece of metal given him and sees that it matches the marking on one of the doors. Could this be a clue identifying the room he seeks? He enters. He is uncertain of what to do next. But instinct asserts itself, and his body's overwhelming need crushes him downward into a horizontal position. His eyes close, and he sleeps. Several hours later, he is abruptly awakened. Hiya, kid. Let me introduce ourselves. The big guy here is Laverne Lacey. Don't call him that. His friends call him Smurfette. He's my bodyguard. Behind me is my bookkeeper, Millie the Purse Sheriff. Over there in the mink coat, we got Chulo. He's one of my guys. You've already met Toots. She's one of the Chulo's girls. And you can call me Vinny. So how are ya? I am. 
Toots says you made this. I did. Uh-huh. Well, she called Chulo, and Chulo probably thought twice about it, but called me. And I called this meeting to discuss this. So tell us about yourself, kid. I've got a feeling this is some story. I shall. What could be better than Nestle Quick and baseball? Nestle Quick and a free baseball. Get a free baseball from Steve Garvey's favorite chocolate milk. Still valid, guys, I swear to God. All right. I love this. This picture I remember a lot as a kid. It spoke to me in many ways. In my realm, I was all the ent entirety of my own universe. I knew only of my own oneness. Until an event of great magnitude in your realm opened a pinhole in mine. Through the pinhole, I observed Earth for years as you reckon time. I watched. I saw that there were many here and that they were in incomplete. I had no knowledge of this incompleteness, this thing called desire. It puzzled me. I sought to study it. Of the many who dwelt upon or visited Earth while I watched, I chose a few beings of great power, presence, and palpable, palpable desire. I caused one among these, the largest one, called Galactus, to gather the others, and to leave a way open for other beings to come if they chose. I offered them a prize, to set them upon each other, to see what desire would cause them to do. They fought. One among them, though, desired more than the prize and strove against me, a moat against a universe. And yet he attained his desire. He succeeded in drawing away the greater part of my energy. Thus, the one called Doom became mighty beyond your conception. Falsely believing that I had ceased to exist, he turned his attention to his enemies from your realm and ultimately destroyed them. And I, I continued to exist. But for the first time, I was incomplete. At last, I knew desire. I desired to be whole again, but I was not strong enough to reclaim my power by force. Not knowing how to satisfy my desire, I sought aid. I inhabited the body of Doom's companion, Claw, and caused him to use all of his faculties, his wits, his cunning, his guile on my behalf. He attacked Doom in a manner which I do not comprehend. Subtly, psychologically, playing upon things of the human mind called fears and doubts. Meanwhile, Doom's enemies were restoring themselves, aided by a female healer. They undid their near-complete destruction and renewed their struggle against Doom. In a moment of great confusion and doubt, Doom's grip on my power weakened, and I reclaimed my wholeness. One and complete again, I sent Doom and Claw far away and returned my realm to ponder. I decided that even more than before I desired to understand. Therefore, days of your time ago, I came to Earth to walk among those here. I encountered the greatest among you first, one called Owen Reese, the Molecule Man. He helped me begin my, my search for understanding. You want to take less conspicuous form. I guess that one's composite, huh? At first I merely watched others learning little. Club Gaffuds, I save the orange ones to last. <laughs> he knows as well as you do that all Reese's pieces Pieces have exactly the same delicious out of this world peanut butter taste. But you see, orange is his favorite color. What's yours? Mine's um Yellow? They don't have a blue. Except that experience the best except that experience is the best teacher, that's what he learned. Seeking experience I found many who would counsel me. But their counsel was not helpful. 
I understood less and less. You stick with me, young man. I'll teach you a thing or two. Finally, one I met spoke clearly, advocating behavior which was simple and direct, if not entirely comprehensible. This is it, man. Bread, cash, gap. With this, you can get yourself just about anything, including the services of heroes for hire. Without it, you got jack. I paid him for his services, and he taught me to do with quantity of gold, which is valuable and for which he said cash stands. My travels continued. He turned their building into gold. Pure gold. And they freaked out. And now I am here. Uh huh, you know, maybe I, I can help you out, pal. What did you say your name was? I am from beyond. How about I call you Frank? Is that okay? Yes. <sighs> uh, look, Frank, I, c I can see you're still tired, so hey, how's about you get some sleep and we'll talk later, huh? Yes. Out, oh, everybody, out. Not you, Frank. Bonkers fruit candy. Hits you with a new flavor, watermelon. Love it. Now, Bonkers bonks you, oh, with watermelon flavor. Mouth-watering watermelon candy with an extra fruity middle. Chewy Fruity Bonkers comes in strawberry, grape, and orange, too. Okay. Not you either, toots. You keep them company, right? See ya, doll. M me And... Well, uh, Frank, here we are, huh? Maybe you should try sleeping on the bed this time. C come here, honey. Outside. Really, get a couple dozen of our boys down here. Pay them double the usual and tell them to make real sure that nobody disturbs our new buddy. Especially that weasel at the front desk. He's your Smurfy. I got big plans for a friend in there, and I don't want anything going wrong. I'll be sleeping in the next room. Call me the minute he wakes up. Seven hours later. There's a food place. A hot dog wagon? You really don't know how to live, do you, Frank? Now we're going to pick up changed clothes for toots, and then we're going to go to a good place. Soon. Your usual, Mr. Corbo? Bring us a bottle of Zagista Benito and an antipasto. No copy, Pastorino. Bet you're hungry, huh, Frank? Yes, but to eat is an intense experience. It is difficult to endure. Nonsense. I'll, you'll enjoy this, kid. Seconds later, go ahead and start, Frank. I shall. Crunch. Huh? No, no, like this. Don't eat the fork either. Just the food. So, some matter is to eat. Other matter is not. I understand. Good, Frank. Good boy. Later, at an ice cream parlor. Look at him go. He's like a kid with a new toy. That's sort of sweet, so to speak, don't you think, Vinny? And that evening, I could have handled this part of Frank's education myself, Vinny. You didn't need to bring these other girls. Hey, Toots, the guy needs experience, right? I'm just giving him the crash course. What's the matter, are you jealous? Give me a break. The next day, in an Upper East Side clothiers. A man's got to have style, Frank. Those clothes you were wearing when we weren't, when we met weren't bad. The mod with it look like Duran Duran or somebody that suits you. Duran Duran. Just hold still, Mr. Uh, I am from beyond. Bayonne. Nice town if you like Jersey, but what's your name? Frank. Hold still, Mr. Frank. I think you look trade chic, Frank, and every girl go crazy for a sharp-dressed man. Yum. Is that true? ZZ Top thinks so. They're a band. What now, Mr. Corbo? 
No, Mr. Smurphy, I think it's time for Frank to do some work for us. Yeah, starting t tomorrow. Next morning. Yeah! I'm providing them a sufficiently intense experience, Vinny. For now, but next time, these punks try to muscle in on my rackets. Ha ha ha. Sorry, I read that wrong. And later, I don't want any of the girls in my stable having any nasty viruses or germs or nothing. If you got so much of a, as of a cold, he'll fix you right up. Just walk by and let him touch you, girls. Oh, it tangles. Wow, he's gorgeous. Later still. Don't make too much gold, Frankie boy. We don't want to flood the market and devalue the stuff. And that evening... Did it, Frank. You cured little Vinny's dyslexia. It's a miracle! Uh, while you're here, Frank, there's just one little thing you could do for me. It's, uh... I shall. Oh my goodness! Mama! Gina, you look just like when I married you. Frank, you old son of a gun. You sure are earning your keep, kid. You're really going to be something when I'm through with you. I am something now. It'll be even better just stick with me. Starting tomorrow, we're going to take some time off. First thing, we'll go shopping. I'll buy you anything, everything you want. And the following day... Isn't it splendid, Vinny? It makes noise and propels one along. It's... As interesting as the hot making device, and the cold making device, and the vegetable chopping device, and like gadgets, you do you, kid? I'm a horse racing fan myself. Let's go to the track. Soon at Belmont Park, Smurfy, you and the boys case the joint. Make sure that no one of the Joe Squid's goods are hanging around. Joe and me still haven't settled who's running the line in business south of 23rd Street. I don't want to get an ice pick on my back on the way to my seat. See, Frankie, having guys working for you, that means you're, you're somebody. A man's got to have guys who he tells jump and they say how hot. That's how you know you're big. Light me, Eddie. Yes, sir. Moments later. Looks like the nag I bet on is gonna lose. No, I shall make the nag win. There, have I earned my keep again, Vinny? Well, no, Frank. Winning's usually good, but if you take the sport out of it, it's no fun. Sport? Yeah, taking a chance, doing it the hard way, gambling. Tell you what, I know an illegal floating casino in Manhattan. We'll go there tonight, and I'll show you some games, craps, roulette. 21, maybe you'll catch on. Days later, at an expensive east side penthouse. Yeah, you're looking good, Frank. I like the new hairstyle. It's real mod with it. Like Michael Jackson or somebody. Thanks, Vinny. You're looking good yourself. Nice pad you've got here, too. Well, a man's gotta have a place of his own, right? Yeah, gonna make your rounds. A man's got to take care of business, right? Right, kid. Hey, why don't you stop by my house later? We'll talk, okay? Sure, Vinny. Catch you later. Good morning, Arthur. Morning, Mr. B. Nice day. Usual route today, sir? Yes, Elliot. S but stop by Radio Shack first. I need some more tapes for the VCR. Batteries for my Walkman. <laughs> and some floppy disks for the Macintosh. <laughs> This for real? <laughs> sure. By the way, your breaking your breakfast is in the fridge. A vanilla egg cream and two Klondike, just as you ordered, sir. <laughs> what if you need a man who hangs the job up in your cuisinart, sir? Not yet. I still have some vegetables and some styrofoam left. Were. Shortly at a barber shop in Little Italy. Lots of action this week, eh, Luigi? Oh uh, yeah, we make a lot of vigorish. Here's the main offices cut. It's a good thing that I'm a bookie. 
make me such a good living of the cutting of the hair. Ah, but if you're a barber, Luigi, your business is always growing, right? Ha ha, very funny. You're so stupid. Later at the docks. How's it going, Mushnik? Not bad, Sir Frank. Uh, sir, we've gotten 10 kilos of pure cocaine in the center of that bale of cotton. After we get it out, cut it, parcel it, and we'll distribute it to our pushers. It'll take a couple of days. Let me give you a hand. Holy mother! That evening at the corner of 26th and Park. Hey, man, how is it? Frank! Hi, Chulo. Hi, toots. So how are you? Oh, fine, you know. Check you later, man. Stay cool. I have to rush right off, I'm afraid. Vinny's waiting for me. That's okay. It's great to see you again, even just for a minute. Frank, do you ever, you know, think of me? I, I mean, since you're seeing a better class of girls now at all. What better class? People are just people to me. I have to go. See you, toots. Yeah, Frank, see you. P.S. I love you. Soon at Vinnie Corbo Sal River Estate. Hello, Vinnie. Hiya, Frank. How was your day, kid? Good. I made the rounds. Stashed the take. It was a good day. Glad to hear it. You've been doing real good. Making this old man proud of you. And that's why I called you here, Frank. You know, it's going to be hard for me to say this. What's wrong, Vinnie? Nothing. Except that you've learned all that I can teach you. You're getting too good. Too big to be cooped up on the small pond I call my turf. It's time you struck out on your own, Frank. You were meant for bigger things. Me, I'm happy here. A man's got to have him s to know. A man's got to know himself, know what's inside of him, and whatever's in there, he's got to use it to the fullest. That's about what it's all about. But still, a man's got to know his limits too. I know mine. But you don't have any limits. It's time for you to move on. I'm going to miss you, kid. You've been like a son to me. See you, Vinny. If you ever need me, need my advice or anything, I'm here, okay? A few days later at the King's Point Long Island Mansion, the largest and most luxurious residence on the East Coast, one of many, many luxury homes newly purchased by the one from beyond, what a great place, Frank. Why don't you go to show us the grounds, Sherry? Yeah, you promised. Sorry, girls, I'm flying out. To oh, sorry, girls, I'm flying out to my yacht for the day. See you later. Soon. There she is, sir. The third biggest hydrofire craft in the Atlantic. I know. I also bought the first and second biggest. Moments later. Is it true you can make gold by magic? Now that you're here, we can really start having fun. All of us girls have been dying to meet you, Frank. We hear you're just wonderful. Yes, first the world's best chef is in the galley making us a lunch to go with the best champagne in the world. Wow. It's no wonder you have this cute little tummy. Hmm, I sense that your words do not match your thoughts. You actually find this accumulation of body fat repugnant. I adore it. How darling. No, no, really. No matter, it is re easily removed by reducing it to energy. There, now for lunch and dessert. Frankie, you, you're amazing. Later. Where are we going? Let's go below decks again, lover. No, sorry, it's time for business. What kind of business? There is a man called the Kingpin works out of office in Manhattan. He is the most powerful crime lord in the world. There is hardly an illegal operation on the East Coast that he does not own, control, or have a piece of. Other smaller crime bosses like Vinnie Corbo pay the kingpin percent percentages of their gross plus tribute, or he destroys them. I am going to meet with this man and muscle in on his operation. Shortly. Hello, kingpin. What? Who is the... Who is so stupid as to break in here? 
I do not know how you got past my guards, but you shall regret it. And I'll crush you with my bare hands. No, you won't. You'll do as I say. Just like your men. They're my men now. You can't resist me, Kingpin. I am all-powerful. You are. I can feel it. Look, I'll keep you on as my lieutenant, okay? But you'll take orders from me. And give me 90% of your take, okay? I, I can't refuse. My will is mine. Thanks, Kingpin. Some of my lackeys will be in touch. I'll serve you well, sir. Boy, that was quick and easy. Too easy. I was meant for bigger things, but... Now what? The next day... As you instructed, Mr. Uh... Call me Frank, Mr. President. Yes, sir. As you instructed, all of our nation's top military and government officials are present to swear allegiance to you. Our will is mine, of course. So, the United States of America is under my control. Not bad, but not enough. Why settle for just one country when I can rule the whole world just by deciding to? With just a thought, I subject all who live to my will without resistance, without a doubt, without exception. Hmm... Well, no, there is one exception. He's sort of a special case, but he isn't a problem to me. I can always deal with him later if I wish. But this is still not enough. Why should I limit my control to humans and other higher life forms? I can bring even the bacteria and viruses under my control. And why stop there? Even inanimate matter can be controlled. How simple to seize every control of every molecule, every atom, every particle of substance in the world. Now, everything is mine. Let all things, wherever I go, pay me homage. Let all things living and unliving bow to the one from beyond. Meanwhile, near Denver, Colorado, in a modest suburban apartment, the second most powerful being in the universe sits watching Three's company with his girlfriend, Marsha. He is Owen Reese, also known to some as the Molecule Man. Marsha, baby, are you okay? Sure, why? I just noticed your molecules are being controlled by some outside force. They are? Golly, I feel okay. Hey, everything... These molecules are being controlled. Even the popcorn. All the molecules in the world, except my own personal molecules, are under the influence of some outside force. Must be the Beyonder's doing. Only he could do this. Or me, maybe. I wonder why. What's he up to? What are you talking about, Oe? What's going on? Well, the Beyonder's messing around, I guess. It's probably no big deal. Maybe he's just going through a phase. But anyway... I'll liberate your molecules from his control. Thanks, sweetums. I just love you to oodles and oodles and oodles. Pass the popcorn, Snuggles Bunny. It's almost time for F Troop. Oh, goody. And so the only two un unenthralled beings in the world return their attention to TV reruns of their own free will. Meanwhile, the one from beyond revels in his supremacy. He appears simultaneously to many thousands of men and women of great power and influence, all whom humble them before themselves. Humble themselves before him. Sorry. Finally, however, one of the mighty pay him homage gives him pause. How interesting. You seem to be a hybrid, a synthesis of human and machine. I am fascinated. You see, I like gadgets. Tell me about yourself. I am called Circuit Breaker, sir. I worship you. I am yours. I... Enough of that. I sense that you're an extraordinary human, driven by extraordinary desires. For more Circuit Breakers, see Transformers number 9. Remember that issue well. One of my favorite memories. I was crippled by a robot. Without the circuitized exoskeleton, I would be helpless... With it, however, I have the power to move, and better yet, avenge myself. I hate robots, especially those which think and can act of their own viol violation, and I seem to be alive. 
They're not alive. They're soulless mockeries of life. Cold, dead steel. And for all their intricate programming, they have no true free will, no spirit, no creativity, because they lack the spark of life. I see. How else may I serve you, sir? That will be all. Thanks. Presently at a posh mansion in Brazil. Something troubling you, sir? Yes. I own everything. I rule everything. I control everything. Virtually every particle of matter and erg of energy on this planet. Yet I am uncontent. Perhaps I should ask Vinny why this is so. Oh no, he's leaving. I miss him already. He's so... everything. A split second later in Manhattan. Vinny! Luther, it's Frank. Pull over. You said if I ever needed advice, I could come to you. Of course, sir. You are the absolute master of everything. I am yours to command. Tell me then, why am I not content? Why do I still no desire? Beats me, sir. But I learned from your example. I followed your instructions and carried them out to their logical ends. Now what? I, I want to help you, sir, honestly. But I can't. Then I shall go elsewhere. Across town. You taught me much that first night. Perhaps there is yet one more thing that you can teach me. Of course I shall, sir, if I can. I possess all there is. Why is there not enough? Do you know? I know that I'm yours. Every bit of me. I worship. Enough. Perhaps in controlling everyone, I have somehow extinguished the spark circuit breaker spoke of. Making all humans like automations. She despises. Slavish to my will. And though it w as though it were a program. Maybe if I free your will. Wow. Look at me, Frank. I've given up my old life working for Chulo. I've got a regular job now. I'm a waitress. And it's all thanks to you. You see, I never had much. And nobody ever treated me nice. But you did. And when you said people were just people to you, I realized that I could, be like, I could be like other people. Like decent people. I knew then that there must be something good inside of me. And if I could find it, stop hating myself, that I wouldn't have to be a sleaze anymore. I could be okay. God, I love you. But I know we could never be together, Frank. You've got a whole life of catching up to do. But you know, so do I now. Goodbye, Frank. Think of me now and then, will you? And thanks. The one from Beyond Ponders. Then releases the world and everything in it, leaving naught but the vaguest shadow of a memory of his conquest, and that in only the subtlest of minds. Shortly at Avengers Mansion, the one from beyond appears. Hello, I wish to speak to the Avengers. May I say who is calling, sir? I am from beyond. The one from beyond? I have heard a bit about you. Oh dear! Well, come in, sir. The Avengers are not in at the moment, I am afraid, but I know that they would not wish to make you, you comfortable to uh, wait their turn. Please, sir, follow me. Certainly. Now, is there anything in which I may help you? Perhaps conquering the world I found I did not... Perhaps conquering the world I found did not bring an end to desire, but instead caused a greater sense of unfulfillment, of incompleteness. Possessions and powers do not bring fulfillment. But moments ago I enjoyed a most rewarding experience, the gratitude of another being. I would like to know more of this. It seems to explain the previous unaccountable behavior of ones such as the Avengers who have greater power than most. But do not use it to seek domination or acquire wealth. They are indeed selfless, sir. I personally believe that virtue is its own reward, but... Then perhaps right away I should begin working with the Avengers. Uh, I'm afraid that wouldn't be possible for a while. You see, uh, they're in the Skull Galaxy right now. I know, I shall join them there at once. What? Oh my, perhaps I shouldn't have mentioned where they were. I hope he isn't troublesome. Only to return hours later to Manhattan. Oh. 
Somewhere in the Skull Galaxy, the one from beyond materializes in the midst of a raging battle, only to return hours later to Manhattan's Fifth Avenue. Very depressed. Bop. I really made a mess of that. It was horrible. Disastrous. Oh well. But another possibility occurs to me. I think I comprehend at last something Vinny explained to me once about sport and gambling. Perhaps it is the trying, not the doing, in which fulfillment lies. I have a plan. A game to play. First, I'll need a lawyer. One used to unusual ye legal work. One with no fear of anything. The Avengers lawyer, Matt Murdock, is perfect. I'll go see him right now. Next. Uh... Next, one month from now, the threads of the epic saga of the Beyonder are gathered again in Secret Wars 2 number 4, which guest stars the Avengers, sort of, Alpha Flight, the cast of Rom, briefly, and the Dazzler. Do not miss, love is the answer. So obviously you can catch the uh, action in a past... Uh issue of the Avengers. See here, the Avengers. The Avengers 260, 260. It couldn't happen in the Skull Galaxy. It's not a pretty sight, they say. Right on. Awesome. Just order your comics like crazy, people. Reach for the stars. Conquer mankind's next and greatest frontier. Join the young astronaut program and face the challenge of space exploration. You can take part in exciting space-related educational activities such as games, contests, and field trips based on monthly NASA space shuttle missions. As a young astronaut, you'll probe the secrets of space and study the science of the stars. Young Astronaut Program, United States of America. Fuck yeah! Stay tuned! For next issue, see Gores number four. Come corner.